So this is some important news for some of you guys that are planning your trips to the Win Casino. So if you're a Win slot user or not, you might want to pay attention to this. It looks like the Win has actually experienced over 500 COVID cases as of this recording. But that doesn't necessarily mean what you think it means. Let's talk about it a little bit more. Is the Ace of Vegas, the Ace of Vegas. Hey there, Spinners and Sharks, Ace of Vegas here, and I hope you're doing well. So originally for today's video, I wanted to do a little bit of a throwback trip report, uh, mainly about Blackhawk, Colorado. I've decided to push that video back a week, and here's why. So this morning, I actually read something rather interesting. I read that the Wynn Hotel and Casino has experienced 500 cases of corona, and no, I'm not talking about the beer in this case. You all know what I'm talking about right now. Uh, since uh, since the reopening as of June 4th, uh, 2020. So since the reopening, they're up to over 500 cases. Now, what does that mean? Let's go ahead and break down some uh, some real statistics first. I got my numbers from the Reno Gazette as well as 8 News Now. And they seem to be backed by some pretty credible sources. I think Gambling News Now also did an article on it too. So there's enough information there. wynn has been very transparent about this whole thing. They've been working on that since April of this year. So I'm feeling pretty confident about the numbers, but let's sit down and talk about the numbers. Now, before we get too far into this, let's get ahead and talk about some objective facts. First, how many people were affected? Well, 548 employees have tested positive at the Wynn Hotel and Casino Las Vegas as of this recording. Next, as of this recording, uh, the last report that the Wynn has given us from September 11th of 2020 shows that only one out of the 285 employees that they tested them alongside University Medical Center showed positive. And three, they're doing these testing cycles once every two weeks. And they're doing them in large batches, just like the large batch we just mentioned. Okay, so what's that really mean? Well, let's go ahead and talk about the positive cases. Now, yes, there have been over 500 cases uh, since reopening, uh, since uh, they reopened up until this point. But here's something that you got to keep in mind. Some of those cases, a few of those cases, actually, 51 of them to be precise, happened before reopening weekend. So those all got worked in there. So somehow that counts as since reopening, not fully understanding how that counts, but apparently it does. Let's go ahead and mark that in there. So that's part of it. So roughly about 10% of their cases, 9% uh, if you really want to get technical, happened before reopening. So, so far, those cases are attributed to employees. Now, the numbers aren't really specific as to where those employees worked. They could have been bell desk, they could have been maintenance, they could have been in the kitchen staff, you know, they could be front desk staff. They could be anywhere, really. We don't know. We know that the Wynn has a lot of employees. It's kind of a big operation between the Wynn and the Encore. We don't know what side of the hotel that they were on. We know that they worked at Wynn, their employees, and there have been 500 something cases. Now, according to that same Reno Gazette article, it looks like about 98% of the cases, according to their contact tracing, have not been attributed to stays at the hotel. Let me explain. So Matt Madox has actually put together a 10-man team to do contact tracing over there at the Wynn. So they're checking the surveillance and they're doing their contact tracing in conjunction with the uh, University Medical Center of Las Vegas. Now, what is their contact tracing method? We don't know because that isn't publicized. What is publicized are the numbers. Now, without actually knowing what the contact tracing method is, I can only assume it's through interview. That's the only thing I can think of. So assuming everyone was truthful in the interview, and I like to think people were. I don't see any reason why you'd want to lie about something like that. Um, I mean, I guess if you really wanted to keep your job and say, hey, this didn't happen at the casino, but it's in nobody's best interest, really. It really isn't in anybody's best interest, I think, to lie on this stuff. So theoretically, about 98% of cases haven't been attributed to being at the hotel or weren't contracted from the hotel. Now, I think Heisenberg uncertainty principle kind of dictates that when you're trying to measure something like this, you kind of modify the data when you try to adjust the data and when you try to calculate the data and when you try to measure the data. So the accuracy of that's always going to be in flux. You're never going to get an exact contact trace on that. That's just a fact of the matter. And yes, I know Heisenberg refers to quantum physics, but you can apply it on a macro level too. 
Okay, so what about the guest experience? How is that affecting you as a guest? Well, it is and it isn't. Let me explain. So as far as guest infections go, it seems as if Wynn has only been able to track down about six infections from guests that have been attributed to their facility. Now, does that mean they necessarily caught it there? You know, they could have caught it at their home state. They could have caught it on the airport. They could have caught it in the hotel casino. They could have caught it from another hotel casino when they went to go visit. I don't know. There's no way to tell, really, except for those contact tracing surveys, which are only about as accurate as the people keeping track of things. So all that being said, what does that really mean? Well, either which way you go about it, there's about a just over 3% positive rate out of all the testing Wynn has been doing, at least with its employees. And I don't think those six positives from guests are really gonna jump that number up a lot. At worst, we're looking about 3.5% positive, which is roughly 2% lower than what we're experiencing with the national average. According to John Hopkins right now, the American national average is about 5.4% positivity rate out of all the cases that they've been studying right now. So now, does that mean that Wynn is necessarily safe? Eh, no, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're dangerous either. We're seeing the cases come up, but we're not seeing more cases than you'd get anywhere else proportionately or literally. So there's that option too. It's really dark over here, hang on. So what's that mean as far as the wind safety goes? Well, if we're talking about the wind, they aren't statistically any more dangerous than any other place you've been in America right now, except maybe your own home. Their whole theory is they want to be the safest place that you can be for guests and for employees outside of their own home, of course, which, you know, when you get 500,000 guests since the reopening, you can only do so much. Now let's talk about some good things that we found out about this. So since the win has reopened, they've seen over 500,000 guests. That's about half a million people. And out of those half a million people, including the employees and the guests, we've only had a total of 554 corona cases that we found at the hotel. And again, still not talking about beer. I'd love to, but we're not talking about beer. So that being said, numerically, that translates to a 0.0012% positivity rate. That's a whole lot better than we're doing as far as national averages go here in the United States. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the win is the safest place in the world, but as far as going to a hotel, it seems like it's not the worst place in the world for you to be either. Now, Clark County is actually pretty populous, being home to the greater Las Vegas metro area, so statistically speaking, you're more likely to see cases that way, just like you would in the NYC or in LA or even out here in Denver. Denver's probably got the most cases at this point. I have to double check the numbers, but I'm 100% certain that in Colorado, we've got the most cases. So just because we got some good news on the numbers, that doesn't necessarily mean that this whole thing's all over with. Uh, when I was checking on John Hopkins today, it did look like we were down in numbers from July. July, we're looking at like seven or eight percent uh, on a national average positivity. We're down to 5.4%, but we're up from two weeks ago when it was 5.2%. So what if you are considering a trip right now? Is it time to cancel? Is it time to get your wind gems back? Or is it time to go full steam ahead? I can't answer that question for you. I presented the facts, presented the data. I'm gonna keep this pretty uh, pretty even here. Now do know that good old spicy Steve Sisolak, he still has the option to say, well, I'll tell you what, I don't see pictures of Spider-Man on my desk. We're gonna go ahead and close it all up. I'm not sure why he wants pictures of Spider-Man, but it's an option, I guess. I guess I think he's J. Jonah Jameson in my head. In all seriousness, though, if he does decide that the data is indicating things could shut down, he's not ruling it out. He has also gone on record stating that he doesn't really want to shut down the casinos or the hotels, but he's willing to do it if it comes up. But also keep in mind, we're still not seeing any shows. We're still not seeing any bars open. So Vegas isn't quite up to regular Vegas standards. So even if you do decide to go, you're not getting a full Vegas experience. I think that should probably push some noobs away, but that's up to you. You guys are all 21 and up. You can make your own decisions. My best advice to you, keep track of the numbers, know your own health, and go from there. What these are telling me personally, as a non-data scientist, it seems as if the people that are going to Vegas are going healthy, washing their hands, and staying healthy 
as best they can while they're in Vegas, at least when they're at the win. Who knows? Now these numbers could change in a week, and I'll probably look like an idiot in about a week if these ever end up changing, so keep that in mind too. Hopefully that's been just enough information for you guys to make your decisions. If you do find that this is a place that you want to go, check out some wind slots videos. We got those over there. And feel free to go ahead and check out those room tours to see if the wind is a good spot for you. Unfortunately, I don't know about other places on the Vegas Strip. I haven't read anything about MGM. I haven't read anything about Venetian or anything like that. So even if these cases were at wind, we're not sure if they came from Matt. We're not sure if they came from Sheldon. We aren't sure if they came from Bill and Jim or... We don't even know if they came from Derek downtown. I don't know. But hopefully these other hotel casinos will take the wind's lead and be a little more transparent about what's happening at their properties too so we can continue to make informed decisions. All right, there's Minners and Sharks. That just about does it for today's video. If you enjoyed today's content and found it informative, I'd appreciate a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Next time we see each other, I'm going to go ahead and make sure we get back to our usual Vegas app shenanigans, maybe play a little bit of my Vegas, maybe play a little bit of wind slots and see how we power level on through and get some more free stuff. Until next time though, this is Ace of Vegas signing out, wishing you all strong hands and of course, happy spending you guys. Viva,